Well, I'm uh, pleased to report that the uh, CVT is buttery smooth again, which this thing has never been since the first day I had it. Oh no, he's pulling stuff apart. He lost a belt. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty. I'm going to stay far enough back that I'm not eating your dust. <coughs> They're trying to go slow to keep the dust out of their eyes. Ha, I just need to get it out of my teeth. Clank, 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 clank. Yeah, don't you love the un unscheduled dirt? Yeah, we blew by and we buried you in dust too. What did we miss? Well, we missed we that and that. that. We, got the we just did Snake World. This is bonus point four. We're going to checkpoint two. I don't even recall that. Was that with, that you, with you, guys? you guys? Yeah. <laughs> I know. See, can cannonball brain. Oh my gosh. The cannonball brain. All right, good morning to you all. Uh, we're beginning day six. Uh, my PCX is uh, put back together, mostly. Can't fix my grip. That got pulled loose from the uh, straps in the truck. Uh, my mirrors are all wonkified from getting banged around in the truck. I think this thing was doing cartwheels back there, so my mirrors are all effed up, and uh, I'll have to sort this. But right now, i got to go over and get some fuel, and uh, everybody's waiting on me, so let's go. So it was my torque drive in the back that's been the problem for a very long time now. And I kept attributing it to uh, variator and everything else. I knew that the contra spring in the back uh, is probably an issue, uh, but it was more likely the uh, the spline. It's like a wait, hey, nice head shake there. Uh, it was like a telescopic uh, issue, you know, where the the pulley backs itself off. I've never really looked at a uh, exploded diagram of it, but there must be an O-ring or something in the uh, in the center of that that keeps all the grease and everything in the bearing assembly in the uh, torque unit itself and that o-ring must be gone because uh, it was puking all of its grease out onto the inner part of the CVT housing the belt and everything else and it was uh, creating all my issues uh, as well as the low end you know bogging not getting off the line and uh, our Trail tail guys over here. Got to say howdy before he rolls off. Give me your scooter, mister. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> how's it going? I got mine running again, so hopefully we're going to be on the road. Oh, yeah. Cool, buddy. Oh. Right, uh, yeah. Going to see how the day goes. Wish me luck. Uh, I'm sure now with all these fresh parts, it is going to run smoothly. Back to Honda OEM reliability. Uh, and again, you know, if it, and, and don't misconstrue that, the uh, original pulley, the torque unit, the whole system, that was factory in this. It was never changed out. So I think it was defective from day one because this bike has always had a propensity for shuttering the belt and, you know, having problems taking off sometimes. So I think that might have been a defect uh, from the factory and I just limped along with it, never really knew any difference uh, for a little while until I had gotten my... Uh, 2016 PCX, the gray one that uh, is now Adrian's. That bike was always butter smooth, and I was like, wait a minute, why is this bike so smooth and mine is to, like vibrate the dash to death when I take off? So, anyway, I don't think the Dr. Pulley was all of the problem. Uh, we definitely saw that it uh, ate its center bushing uh, on the variator. Ah, uh, please see cashier. Crap. Do a different card. I don't want to see the cashier. Every now and then my cards get locked up when I'm traveling. I don't want to go see the cashier. I want to get on the road. I want to see some miles disappearing under my front tire. That's what I want. Okay, we're back. Stupid. It, my card uh, is on a pretty uh, vicious, uh, aggressive uh, profile for fraud prevention through Chase. And uh, whenever I'm traveling, come on, I said go. I mean go. Uh, it, uh, it gets locked up. They want to make sure that I'm really me and I'm really somewhere that my card usually isn't. <laughs> hey! 
I'm already full. Look at that. I'll let this go. So today will be the fuel economy tests. I, uh, was, I've been tracking everything pretty carefully. I always do. And uh, the last tank I turned on that thing in uh, getting into uh, Los Alamos was 111, almost 112 miles per gallon indicated. I haven't done the uh, the calculations on it, but it's going to be that, give or take a couple miles per gallon. So getting excellent fuel economy. Uh, look at that, nine dollars and fifteen cents, two and a half gallons. And I'm right there at the line. Um, so we're going to see how this new. OEM variator does uh, in comparison to the Dr. Pulley that I've been running and it should uh, probably drop a little bit because the uh, the Dr. Pulley gives you a taller ramp profile in the front which means lower engine RPM per given wheel speed so yeah I made a Exxon Valdez gimme thank you I'll get that in a sec so we're gonna see how the uh, economy does with the factory stuff versus the uh, Dr. Pulley stuff on a well broken in machine. 12,500 some odd miles on it. I couldn't find my uh, my battery door or the battery for my 360 camera so I'm not going to be running that today. I hope it doesn't rain otherwise I need to take it down because uh, it's definitely not waterproof with no door on it. Um, so I'll be using chin cam only today. I don't have time to dick around and unpack everything looking for those two pieces because uh, everything got shuffled during my uh, scooter's temporary incarceration in the transport truck. 110.4 indicated on that one. All right, off we go. Everybody's waiting on me, as usual. Video production chores, repacking chores, every damn thing in this, under the sun. Yeah, it picks right up now. Good spot for a picture. Don't run me over. My mirrors are jacked. My rear tire feels low too. I don't want to check that because I got to tear everything apart to do it. I'm going to do a squish test. When I went over that bump, it felt a little squishy dishy. Yeah, she's a few pounds low. I'll ride it. I'll stop at one of the checkpoints. My rear tire is a few pounds low. But I'm not gonna mess with it because I gotta unpack the seat. Yeah, it's, it's it's rideable. I think it's down to probably 30 pounds. I usually keep it at 36. So. Okay, clock has officially started. Begin the route. What is it, 7 o'clock? I don't even know what time it is. 7.23. I was hoping to be out of here 7, but yeah, that's how things go. So let's get the route loaded. Uh, apps, trip planner, save trips, day 6. Where is that number 6? Did I look right past it? Day 6 track isn't in there? Oh, that sucks. Okay, so now i got to go to tracks. What happened to my day six? Imports. D4, D1, 2, 3, 4, 6. I don't know what happened to six, but import. You guys, you guys get to see what happens in the background here. There's day six track. I load that. I go over here to wrench and I say convert to trip. Start to finish. Done. This usually works pretty well, you know, as far as uh, accuracy. Uh, as long as you've got a track, uh, there's a difference between a track and uh, a route. Uh, a track is a hard line. It follows that instead of trying to dynamically reroute you. Uh, so we go back, we go back, we go back, we go to Trip Planner now. Go into Save Trips, and Day 6 Track is right there. Say OK, go, go. Ready to hit it. And that gives me turn by turn. Without that, you know, I can follow the line. 
but uh, it's not turn by turn and doesn't tell me, you know, in X number of miles, do this, do that. So continue to Highway 137, close my upcoming points and follow the line. See if I can get these guys on comms. I didn't set up the group comms. Typical me. Doesn't have all my video production chores in order. That's all right. I'll be interested to see what uh, my rear tire pressure is later today. Bend this mirror back in place so I'm not looking at my knees. And I got some kind of imbalance with my front wheel. Hopefully not a bent front wheel or something. Because the uh, I've got head shake. Like, see, look at that. I could always go hands off on this thing before, not now. It's got head shake. I don't know what that's about. Get my mirror situated here. Is anyone on comps? Check, check, radio check. Nope. Oh, you got hey Tyler. Tyler. Taylor, Tyler, Tyler, T Ty, T Ty. Haven't had time to set up the uh, dedicated audio recorder this whole trip. I turned it on one day and I don't think that it was actually recording because the the monitor that I have, it's Bluetooth enabled. I can load the app on the phone and I get to see the audio levels, you know, what it's recording. And it was flatlined, so I don't know if it recorded 12 hours of silence or not. Day six, yep. Welcome to Cannonball Brain. Can't remember what day it is, where we are, where we're going. We're just following a line and hoping we make it there. It does, it, they all start running together. And like I was saying the other day, uh, when I got back after the 21 trip, I took probably three weeks or a month before I even attempted to go through the video footage. And uh, I was editing it and I, I don't remember a whole lot of that footage. I know it was me because it's my voice talking on camera, but I don't remember any of those roads or the rides. <laughs> it was like, what? I really did, I was there? I don't remember this at all. Not even a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah it just, it cooks your brain. You, your short-term stuff doesn't get converted to long-term properly because of the sleep deprivation and yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's all a blur, yeah. I try to remember to have at least one camera running. Uh, you know, my chin cam, preferably, because that's where the audio is. Uh, what sucks is when the microphone comes disconnected and all you're getting is wind noise and you're trying to remember what you were talking about through that section or if it was even important or if you're just, you know, diarrhea, the brain dumping all over everything, who knows. No way to reconstruct it. At least for me, because I don't start out with a plan. I just talk, you know, just like right now, talking to somebody on the phone. Well, I'm uh, pleased to report that the uh, CVT is buttery smooth again, which this thing has never been since the first day I had it. Uh, and it has its climbing back. So back there on that hill, I was going 55 and I cranked it open to see if I could accelerate. And it did. It did quite well. Yeah, so like right here, I'm not stuck at maximum ratio. It's it's actually gearing down a bit to uh, allow me to climb. So most excellent. So the torque drive was the problem all along. Now, whether it affected the Dr. Pulley variator's longevity and reliability, or if it was the other way around, we don't know. But definitely the, uh, the torque drive was shot and the Dr. Pulley wallowed itself out and it killed the uh, the center bush on the uh, drive portion of things up front. Yeah, I can feel this rear tire is a bit squishy. Uh, it's low. I don't know. I don't think I've got a, a puncture or anything, but it, it feels like it's four or five pounds low compared to where I usually run it. I noticed it, you know, when I bumped over that 
curb, but you know, back there, right before we were taking the pictures, it felt like it was kind of springy, bouncy, squishy. And uh, I just did the squish test on it with my thumbs and it was dipping in a little bit easier than it should. I think I've got about 30 pounds in it and I usually run it at about 34 to 36. Just feels different. Yeah, 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 right through a bunch of stuff that we did last November uh, in our fall ride tour. Yeah, yeah, we'll be passing over some stuff that we did. Uh, uh, this old swinging bridge. I'm not sure if we're actually going to go across the swinging bridge or not. It's really neat. It's uh, It's been rebuilt a couple times through history, but it was made back in like the late 1800s or something like that. And then uh, it's going over this little river, and apparently they had a a nasty flash flood back in the 80s or something that washed it out and then it was rebuilt after that but the whole thing is a uh, steel cable suspension bridge with wooden slats so when you get on it whether it's a car or truck or you know even human weight on it can uh, make the whole bridge bounce and sway so you jump on it and it, it bounces around it's pretty cool yeah, what I was going to say is, uh, unfortunately, I'm running on a, a squishy rear tire, so I'll have to watch my corner speeds, but it's going to be a twisty ride today. Out in this area is where I always grew up uh, riding because there was nothing to ride in central Oklahoma, so we'd always come out here to Arkansas, Missouri area, because you got the uh, Wachita Mountains and the... Uh, Ozark Mountains. Everything is just green and hilly and beautiful out here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You're local. You know this area. Okay, so here's a test. I'm wide open on this hill and I'm actually able to maintain and climb just a bit. Yeah, so that's a definite improvement over my previous uh, torque drive in the rear you know, there's no way I would have been steadily losing speed back there unable to maintain climb cool I've got high hopes my fuel economy is uh, shite right now 86 we'll see if it runs up gets closer into the 90s or almost 100 but you know so far the last few miles have just been a lot of hills and climbing get it out on the open road and let it cruise and hopefully it'll get up to around 100 If I remember correctly, when I upgraded from the factory pieces to the Dr. Pulley, uh, with just the sliders in the factory variator, I noticed uh, about a 7 or 8% jump in fuel efficiency. And then when I upgraded to the Dr. Pulley variator and the sliders, uh, I think the, the net gain was 12 to 14%. So it's, it's a pretty significant gain. All that doesn't mean shit if it's not reliable, but yeah. Yep, I'm feeling that rev limiter. I'm not used to it hitting right there. I got 66 down the hill and it started going, huh, 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 huh. Like, oh shit, is the bell going out again? <laughs> oh, I haven't felt that rev limiter in so long. Bonus point coming up. Ron dropped back quite a bit, unless he's over here. Nope, he's back there. Yeah, so maybe he's uh, having trouble climbing. I think he's got a broken clutch spring in his uh, rear drive. That's what's creating all the heat in his uh, drive line. The, the drive bell, the clutch bell is blue, blue, blue. Man, that thing is overheated like crazy. Did you hear his story? How he's traveling on the road he started this trip with 700 bucks. So he's just living off of donations and sponsors and stuff like that, living on the road. That's just amazing. So let's see if I can find somebody that can uh, donate a whole rear drive to him. That would be great. No, Facebook page. Yeah, he does everything through a Facebook page. Yep. What is our uh, bonus point up here? What are we looking at? Yeah, but what? Okay, I didn't know what it is. Oh, great. All right. 
Let's, let's promote cancer. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ooh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to be on the right. I'm already over here. I'm committed. Oh, no. He's pulling stuff apart. He lost a belt. Dealer in the last three days in three cities, I can't find a belt. I've got a belt, I think. You don't, don't want to give it up, do you? No, shit. I'm thinking it's on the support truck, but we can get it. I called Doug. It's on. It's on the van. His van? Or yeah, it's on. It's on the van. You need a boat? Yeah. Got it. Okay, he's got it. I gave him a spare last night. I didn't get my spare under the seat. I put it on the truck. Oh yeah, look at that carnage. Ladies and gentlemen, that is absolute shred city. Yeah, when they go, they go. So this is... I can't think of your first name. Uh, Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Yeah, man. Let me call Doug back. Yeah, let him know you got a belt. Uh, so this is your second or third? Second belt. Okay. So I don't know. It should be the same. They should be the same. Rolling, you know? Yeah, yeah, it'll get you down the road. Fears on me tonight. Yep, I got. It. Hell, oh shit! Yeah. Look at you, man. Yeah. And dinner. All right. No, no, keep that shit. We're buying dinner. You keep that for the road. All right, we're gonna take my picture here. Don't forget to take your picture. Huh? Picture. Check in. Oh, where are we at? It's a bonus point. Yeah, we think so. Uh, the second spare belt, where am I looking? You're over there. Uh, the second spare belt uh, that my guy, Dino, sent to me, uh, I donated to Ron. So Ron got it out from under his seat, and we're going to get this guy back on the road. Ain't that great? Man, pay it forward. It always comes back around. Yeah. Yeah, he's stock, uh, but he's been cooking belts. This is his second or third one, I don't know. Yeah. You got all your pieces? Okay. You'll need to pull that clutch off the back. You changed one already on the trip, right? Yeah, on I-40. Yeah. Of the interstate. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you want me to hang out and help, or you think you got it? I'm good, y'all. You sure? Y'all get take some time up. Make, some, make your time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That should be fine. All, All right, man. A RV, you know, just last week. Yeah, yeah, but that's a shit way to start the day. Yeah, and then Doug, he still hasn't come by yet, so he'll okay. check on me. Which I told him I was good, had a belt. Okay, man. But he hadn't left yet, so he'll be coming this way. Yeah, yeah, they get out late, so. Okay, all right. Appreciate it, y'all. Well, I hope to catch you at some of the checkpoints later today. What number are you? 144. Yep. All right. <laughs> Hang in there. You know, my only job here is to finish. I, I heard that. I, I ain't worried about nothing else. That's all I'm looking forward to. Just want to finish. I don't care about the points. Are we turning? Uh, yeah, we're turning left there. That's a blind rise here. Not ideal. Okay. Yeah. So nice to be able to accelerate and it's not shuttering the bike apart. He's able to use the spare belt that I gave Ron last night. Nice. All right. So big thanks to Dean. Dean, I got your name right today, I hope. God, I'm such an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I was calling him by the wrong name half of the day. I got uh, Dean's, Doug's, uh, Taylor's, Tyler's. God, I, I'm so bad. We were talking yesterday in the support truck 
about the logistics of all this and uh, one of the things that might be really beneficial to uh, the cannonballs in the future is to have semi-official parts trucks that are uh, also running the route behind everybody or at least you know selling pieces and parts uh, at the start and finish lines each day so have a bunch of you know honda pcx and adv belts and rollers and clutches you know and a spare parts bin basically just a rolling parts shop uh, for all of the most popular models that are competing so it would be important to choose your bike early you know well before cannonball instead of leaving it to the last you know few days or whatever that way uh if the rolling parts truck becomes a reality they can kind of estimate or forecast parts needs and things like that i don't know how the the cost logistics would work out on that because obviously unless it's sponsored by the manufacturers or by a big dealer they could take them back if they weren't used you know you, you wouldn't know what the consumption rate was actually going to be until it's all done so, i don't know it'd be a neat idea The vintage cannonball run, the old bikes uh, that are over 100 years old, those guys have their own rolling machine shop trucks and they actually lathe out and create parts on the road. It's amazing because those things just eat themselves. Can't order those parts anymore. They're being good. Yep. Yeah, that happened to me a few years back. I was going by on my uh, CB500 in some hills out in, I think I was in Missouri, and uh, a big dog, you know, probably 100 pounder, came running out at me, and he wasn't changing his path, you know, like he was going to give chase you know his arc was not set he was just coming right for me like a linebacker uh, i was like ah oh, crap and i made the decision to not break i just stuck my boot out and locked my leg at the last second and got him right in the head with my boot about took me off the bike <laughs> oh man it was a hell of an impact dog gut he i bowled him over man he rolled like three times got up and ran the other way he's like oh man he ain't playing <laughs> Yeah, maybe he learned a lesson. I did too. Boy, that hurt my knee. Good. Okay. The monkeys and a girl. For those of you viewing at home long after the fact, uh, when we're pulled off the side of the road, uh, we always try to give a thumbs up or an okay or a wave by or something like that. That way other riders don't stop uh, to see if you're needing assistance or injured or whatever. As long as you give an okay or a thumbs up, then uh, we just keep on trucking. But if it's a solo rider stop for any reason, it's always a good idea to at least slow down and holler at them, see if they need help never want to leave a fellow motorcyclist or scooterist stranded on the road even if you're just there in a uh, emotional support capacity you know your cell phone might have better signal than theirs to you know to call for help Ooh. do we have gravel today okay good not a big deal really i'm just curious my rear tire is low so that actually helps on gravel but makes it wallowy everywhere else we're getting an escort from a local thirty five yeah i got it on yeah i got it on camera uh i think a couple times but i never really recognized them as we were going through because you know we're blasting through we don't stop it's not a photo op time it, my brain never stops spinning you know i'm always thinking of ways to 
improve or uh, revise processes and things like that. And yesterday on the support truck, I was coming up with all kinds of uh, ideas for uh, tactical and logistical controls for what they were doing. It'd be awesome to have uh, full comms and GPS tracking position updating and all kinds of stuff on those vehicles instead of relying on just the app that's on the phones. Communication was a big deal. Uh, they're just using cell phones to call each other and sometimes the cell phones are not working. So it would be nice to have uh, good two-way radio or you know, at least backup connectivity so you could use uh, like the Zello phones, the internet-based uh, push-to-talk communicators. That would be pretty cool. It's so much easier to just key up and talk uh, for quick information relay than it is to actually place a call hi, this is so-and-so, blah, 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 you know, open up a full conversation. It's a lot easier to just to blind call something. Yeah, they did a lot of work on this app. Uh, it's it's very good. I think Dave has worked with a software developer. Uh, a lot of it is him, you know. I don't know that he's actually doing the coding, but he's doing all the, the application development and control. And I think he told me last year that Stevie is also helping with that. So they've put some money they put some bucks into this uh it's it's a good app i think it could use a little bit more functionality in a couple places but it's light years better than the first one was uh, last year or 21 i keep saying last year uh the one in 21 was uh not ideal it had a lot of issues and it wasn't updating uh you know uploading photos and we were losing checkpoint stuff so it's kind of a problem on the road oh it's so nice to be able to accelerate away from a stop <laughs> oh that's beautiful i haven't had that in years actually a couple years i guess i should have replaced that whole drive unit a long time ago just yeah yeah it's just the process of elimination and i was always attributing it to the aftermarket parts you know blame the the non-honda stuff but no it was that honda drive unit was just going bad all right with a low rear tire I should have just filled up my tire back there. Ah. I'll wait for a fuel stop. Because I've got to release my bag on the back seat. To get under there. laughing in your helmet are you <laughs> I think doing this on scooters is every bit as fun as doing it on sport bikes because you're never worrying about gear selection and all that you just pay attention to your cornering line your entry speeds and you know just just go man just twist and go it's so much fun of course my cornering line looks like shit right now but yeah 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 yeah, and that's really the, the drawback in uh, American riding society is everybody thinks that you got to have 100 horsepower and 100 miles an hour to get anywhere. They're doing themselves a disservice by not trying out scooters, man. These things are a grin a minute. And they're a lot more capable than people give them credit for. I mean, here's proof right here. We're taking them across the country. Blind ride. Yeah, you guys are gone. I'm not even going to try to run you down. Not with this low rear tire. <laughs> Hell no. I'm going to end up eating some weeds today. Wish I had my 360 camera running for this. Oh well.
So do you ride these roads very often, Doug? Okay, yep, so you're familiar with all this. Isn't that great? Yeah, the, the elevation changes are just a hoot. It, it's a roller coaster, man, and it, it's it's the cheapest roller coaster you can operate because this is just pennies a mile, you know? <laughs> it's awesome. I love these roads. Yeah, well, and that was my deal is I was a, a go fast racing sport bike and dipshit for years not disparaging the people that do that you know you can do it safely but more often than not you get the moto squids out here that are just hauling balls and hanging over the double yellow and doing stupid stuff yeah when i saw that buddy of mine get killed right in front of me i was like all right i'm done with that lucky it wasn't me But these, it feels like you're doing MotoGP speeds, you know, Isle of Man TT, <laughs> and we're just going, you know, 60. It's always more fun to ride a slow bike fast than a fast bike slow. Yeah, the more I think about it, I think the perfect cannonball machine is probably going to be that ADV-160 with uh, cartridge emulators in the front, you know, drastically upgraded forks and uh, good rear shocks, either YSS or maybe some Olins or something on the rear. And uh, it, it, it's just going to handle like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I was really impressed with Kevin's when I rode it for a while. I was like, man, this thing handles. This is good. A few moments later. All right. Sorry, guys. I had a long family phone call. I see. I was watching the route. We lost the other guys. I hope they uh, they figure out the routing line and they'll get there. We lost them back there in the twisties. They were they dropped way behind us. I'm definitely using you as the uh, local uh, speed escort. You know the roads. You know the stuff to avoid. Yeah, I see us coming up to it, coming up from the south. Why did you do the bypass? You think this was faster? Okay. <laughs> Man, that rev limiter is freaking me out. I haven't felt it in so long. It, 
Yeah, I know. And for me, I never hit it for the last, you know, four years, five years on this thing. Uh, I was always drag limited top speed. So when I started feeling that bumping sensation a few days ago, it was the belt self-destructing <laughs> so, my my base instincts are kicking in oh crap it's about to die yeah yeah the when the belt yeah yeah it'll, it'll slip and hitch like that and it's because the belt is actually binding up in either the pulley or uh against the housing as it's starting to delaminate and come apart so it's almost an identical situation, but you'll feel it. It's a more pronounced sensation, uh, like more of a forward jerk instead of just a little dip in power. Yeah, it feels about the same. You'll go through a belt eventually. First time you do, you're like, oh crap. But as long as you got your tools to change it, you're good. It's just a rubber band in there. It's yeah, it's bound to give way eventually. You know, I said that exact same thing last time I was out here. It's like my wife would call me. Ooh, I'm about to overcook that. Uh, my wife would call me and uh, say, when are you coming home? I don't know. I haven't found the end of the road yet. It's just, it's a hoot. I'd be out here all the time. <laughs> I was about to hang that 15 mile an hour corner back there and the alarm bells went off in the back of my head. Low rear tire, low rear tire. I need to air up my tire at their next stop. Yeah, no worries. I'm just taking it easy. You guys are running out ahead of me, so I'll probably drop out of comms here in a second, but I'll catch up with you. back of this thing is wallowing around pretty good enough that it's altering my cornering angles so I don't want to end up screwing myself and end up off the pavement slip angle is not consistent Yeah, it wallows every time I set a line. Which way did you guys go? Left or right? Left or right? Oh, shit. 
Don't want to end up in the lake. Oh, there you are. Never mind. Just want to make sure I don't miss him on a blind turn. Yep. Wooden bridge. One lane. 11 foot 6 inches. I wonder. Oh, well, we're not on the official route. I was going to say, I don't think the, uh, the support van would make it through here. Because he said he had 11 feet something height, so... Yeah, it'd be a shave. Okay. Yeah, that 10 mile an hour one down by the lake about put me in the lake. Yeah. I was busy looking down at the GPS to figure out where the road was going and I about went right off the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You pop up over a curve and there's no road. Like, oh crap, which way is it going? Yeah, I've ridden all this stuff at least once. I don't think Tale of the Dragon is all that. It's okay, but the problem with uh, the Dragon is there are so many corners you can't really build up speed and have fun unless you're being dangerous with these roads out here in arkansas and missouri there are plenty of them that i think rival the dragon uh, because the corners are a little bit more gentle you got plenty of switchbacks and crazy stuff but you're able to build up a little bit of speed and you know you got gentler transitions so I, in my opinion i think they're more fun yeah yeah it's a it's a workout I don't really enjoy it. And the problem is it's so famous that it's always busy. Uh, you've got to be just at the right time of day to get out there and have fun and not be risking your life because people come flying those corners in the wrong lane head on at you. So it's a, it's a risk thing. Yeah. It, immediately, yeah. It just, it, it's a huge turnoff for me. Yes, yeah. You can't be out there at all on a weekend because uh, you're either going to get stuck behind a whole bunch of traffic that's going super slow or you're going to be getting passed by people over the double yellow that are trying to kill you. I've been out there once or twice and I was queued up behind a whole bunch of stop traffic because people had wrecked, you know. So, yeah, it's just it's a, not a good place in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I've done it in a car two or three times. I took my M5 out there and I was cranking my M5 through it. That was fun. Uh, and I managed to hit it at a not so busy time of day. I didn't really have much uh, on the road in front of me and not too much in the oncoming. Uh, I've done it on sport touring bikes. I've never taken a small bike out there. Yeah. Have you ever done the Arkansas Dragon out here, Doug? The 123? Yeah. 123 is great. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's like 180-something curves uh, in 15 miles or whatever it is. So it's spread out a lot more than the, the tail of the dragon. No, there are no bad, no bad roads out here. That's right. They're all good. They did not have a ruler when they made this stuff. It's just twisty, twisty. Yep, Harrison is a great area. So is uh, Jasper and all that. Yep, Mount Judea, you got it. Yep. Yep, I love this area. Anywhere throughout the Ozarks and the Wachita Mountains is just great riding. Yeah. 
I have never done the uh, hot springs out here. I have, I need to do that one of these times. I think I did it when I was a kid. My parents came out here because we used to go to Branson, Missouri and stuff like that a lot. And uh, I remember going through Eureka Springs and we did some kind of a hot spring thing, but I've never done it as an adult when I knew what was going on. Okay, that's all right. No, that's all right. I just had to get out from in front of a dump truck that wanted to flatten me. And a chapel, the little chapel, right? I'm going to sit here in the shade while you reroute, sir. Recalculating, recalculating. Okay, actually, yeah, we'll go up here, and then if we have to turn around or whatever, if you guys don't mind waiting a second, I'm going to uh, do my tire because it, it's starting to bug me. Okay. Yeah, this tire is starting to bug me. Actually, I'm just, I'm just, uh, yeah, it's squishy. I'm just going to park on the curb here and try not to fall down this uh, sheer drop on the right. Yeah, I'm going to fix it if you don't mind. I, I'm just, it's starting to, it's starting to wear on my nerves. You see the mini moto there? This will just take a moment. <clears throat> I hope. Oh, my battery's about to die on my main camera. I'll hook it up. All right, everybody. I, I had my helmet off. I forgot to record the process. But yes, I was correct in my assumptions. I was four and a half pounds low in the rear and about three, three and a half pounds low in the front. Uh, the pressures uh, were not where they should have been. Just altitude, I'm sure. I haven't checked them since I left Houston. I, I knew they were low. I can tell by feel. Oh, crap. everybody checking in from the road uh, just entering Harrison Arkansas this morning at I don't know what time it is I can't read it and I gotta ride and not kill myself uh, we're making pretty good time today we had one little minor detour where I uh, held us up for about four or five minutes checking my tire pressure uh, I was right I was uh, about five pounds low in the rear and about four pounds low in the front so I corrected that little problem and uh, the bike feels a whole lot better now. It doesn't wallow around in the corners. So we're going to continue on. Uh, the boys are going to stop for fuel here in a minute. They're getting low. I still have two or three bars, but I'll uh, use that as opportune timing to refuel myself. And uh, I probably won't even get into this uh, tank because we got a 380 mile day or something like that. So I could probably make it, but it would be cutting it thin. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, top off the main tank and leave this alone for later today. It's so nice to actually be able to accelerate again off the bottom. Oh my god, it's amazing. Hey, got another no, another bike, not a scoot. All right, I'll just fill here. I lost paint on my fairing uh, where the straps were rubbing the hell out of it in the uh, truck. So right, I'm gonna have to get a whole lot of new fairing panels. I'll just reskin this thing when we're all done. Five seventy-five. Look at that. One point five gallons. So I still had a gallon in the tank. Well, almost. 0.1, so I had 0.6 in there. Okay, 0.5, I guess. All right, so 147 on that trip, and calculate those miles later. It's doing pretty decent. It's 95 something miles to the gallon, so fuel efficiency is down. Yeah, fuel efficiency is down compared to the Dr. Pulley Variator, and that's to be expected because it's a, a lower ramp profile, but it's doing okay. 
that was full tilt boogie. Yeah. Uh, hello. It's funny, last night, uh, Eric Vespachev was working on his uh, scoot. They tightened it up, got it all back together, and it wouldn't start. And he's like, oh no, I've got electrical problems. The thing won't start. Start run switch was clicked off. <laughs> <laughs> Check the obvious. <laughs> Somebody was messing with it and it wasn't him, so he didn't know what was going on. Did, oh man, did I put my fuel lid back in there? I think I did. I did it by motor memory and I just forget to look. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did, I did. What didn't you do? <laughs> I could not remember putting my fuel lid back on there, but I did it just out of motor memory. I was like, oh man, did I leave? Uh huh. A few moments later. Hit, hit the suicide lane, let's go. We're never getting out if we don't go. The lights aren't uh, synchronized, so we're, we're stuck on either a big train of traffic on this side or on the other side. Yeah, I got a big wobble in my front wheel now. Like, bad, between 30 and 45 miles an hour. I don't know what that is. So we just keep going straight. We should catch up to Doug eventually if we get out of these red lights. You still hear us, Doug? Now he's gone. I beat you here. <laughs> Yeah, good luck. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. People are coming through here pretty quick. What were we supposed to get a picture of? Is it just the tanks or what? Well, I have no chance of uh, a great scorecard, so. This is a checkpoint, CP1, CP1 right here. I think. Baptist Church. Maybe CP2. CP2. Keep going. We missed. We missed something? What did we miss? We missed that and that. We missed two. And that. Last thing I took was the tobacco place. So we didn't get a church, did we? That's checkpoint one. We got the church? I can't. Snake World. This is bonus point four. We're going to checkpoint two. I don't even recall that. Was I with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> I know. See, can cannonball brain. Oh my gosh. Yeah. He's got the brain too. The cannonball brain. <laughs> Everything is blurring together, man. Okay, good to go. Hey, I spun the tire. I spun the tire, man. Man, I've got torque on the bottom end. Yeah, it's gonna get away from me. Don't know what to do with all this newfound power. I'm getting sleepy already. I'll make it. 
going slow, following behind slow traffic, just I, I get numb, I zone out. Yep. Yeah, point to MC five thousand six. Yeah, it doesn't look pretty. I'm going to stay far enough back that I'm not eating your dust. I could grab it. Do you have anywhere to put it, Tyler? I might be able to strap it right at my crotch. Yeah, uh, do you have extra room on your rock strap? Or will your rock strap go any further? Yeah, you've got some slack. Yeah, it probably easier because uh, this is going to be dangerous for me. I won't have anywhere to sit. We could, we could. Shit. Just put it through the handle and it flop. Yeah, it much, much, uh, more uh, secure than the Right. Way. Yeah. 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 It'll give you some tension. Let's let's cinch that down. There you go. That's good. Well, go back over it with your uh, with your net and give it a shot. See what I mean. <laughs> oh Lord, it is bad. Oh, it's oh, just it's dumb. Just I, I almost, almost threw it away this morning. morning. Well, hopefully somebody can use the gas can. We're not just wasting our time. This PCX doesn't have good suspension for this nonsense. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. What are all these scooters doing coming through here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting into chunkies here. Ooh, real big. Ugh. I'm smelling lots of fuel. I don't know if I'm leaking or where that's coming from. I said I'm smelling fuel, raw fuel. I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, I'm, I'm smelling something. So, did you see that on uh, on Google Maps, or did you just remember this? Wow. Okay. Did you know this was part of the route at the time? Oh, wow, that's cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Ooh, that's sketchy.
Okay. Yeah, deep, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chunky, chunky, chunky. Oh, 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 chunky. It's a pretty steep climb. I'm going to get over here on the left because it seems smoother. This is another one of those on camera, it looks flat. It ain't. It's nice to be able to pull up the telemetry stats and visualize that. Uh, man, that's rough. Yeah, hard right. Actually, it's it's not here hard right. It looks like it was somewhere else hard right, but yeah, maybe the GPS is just off. Maybe the GPS is not registering. Yeah, well, not yet. It hasn't updated. No, no. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, yeah, it's just after. So it, it hadn't updated properly. Yeah, I'm smelling a lot of fuel. I don't know if it's yours or mine or whose. I am curious about where that smell is coming from. I'm smelling a lot of fuel. You're not missing a gas can, are you? I gotta check mine. I You're not missing a gas can, are you? No, they came in through the time. Oh, okay. I'm checking my fuel lid, guys. Hang on one second. I I'm smelling way too much fuel. Did I forget my gas cap at that gas station? I didn't see it back there. It's no. Like no, mine good. Oh, it's this thing. Yeah, and now I see it. It's leaking. My my can is leaking on the down side of the spout. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Is it falling off? Yeah. Gas no, gas no. Here, yeah, it's my can leaking over here. Okay, so I got it a tiny bit too full. There you go. That's going to stay put. It'll dangle a bit, but cool. All right. Off we go. Whoa! We about lost the bike. No, not you, Doug. Sorry. <laughs> Tyler about lost his. It was going over. He caught it at just the last second. <laughs> yeah, that's when you dropped it and broke the front signal. Yeah. All that was just to save somebody's gas can. Yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. Ooh, that's bad. Goody. Grit in my teeth. Oh, that's rough, real rough. Ooh. Funny, there was no bypass for this. I didn't notice it on the. I didn't because I was looking for a red circle, you know, to give the option. Let's see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's what I was dealing with uh, in going into Los Alamos. I had to take the bypass, and that was probably 60 miles. It was huge. It was at least an hour. Yeah, it was like 60 miles. It was a massive loop. But I couldn't do it because, you know, it was dark and I was having CVT problems and everything anyway. So the last thing I wanted was to get stranded out there on the dirt with a blown CVT. You know, hell no. In the dark, no less. Yeah. Yeah, and with the way this thing was misbehaving, I had zero bottom end. You know, I had no torque to spin the rear tire off a of stop. So it was getting sketchy, even the stuff that we did. Yeah, I'm just going through a cloud. I can barely see the road. No, no, no. I just I have to get off to the side. Now the wind is cooperating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. Now the way it was drifting coming up that hill, it was just a whiteout. Trying to go slow to keep the dust out of their eyes. Ha! I just need to get it out of my teeth. Clank, 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 clank. There's no contrast on this stuff. You can't see the bumps until you hit them. Uh. Gravel, gravel, gravel. Okay, here we go. Oh. Yeah. Air myself out here. Yeah, scooter's on the limit, man. No chicken strips on these tires. What's that? No, no, you run. I'm, I'm good back here. Getting some good camera angles and just rolling. Great fun out here, man. I love these roads. Love them. Yeah, where 
we're not speeding, so we're doing good. Yep. Yeah, you're uh, innocent enough, they don't even look twice, even if you do blow by them at 10 past the limit. Go by on sport bikes and they start giving you the hairy eyeball, even if you're not speeding. Yep. <laughs> it reminds me, I, uh, I accidentally got other people tickets a few times with my Silverwing uh, because I'd be running hard, fast highway stuff and cranking it in the corners and, you know, just being a hooligan. And I'd pass a cop going the other way and the cop would circle around and I'd go, ah, crap, he's coming for me. And uh, he blew past me and pulled over a car that I was coming up behind or something else. So apparently the, <laughs> yeah, apparently the radar picked me up because I was hauling balls and uh, the, the cop automatically assumed it was the car and not the scooter. <laughs> I felt bad. I wasn't going to go back and correct the error though. I'll let them work that out. It's gorgeous out here, man. Yeah. So what is it, the school bus or the Wild Bill's Outfitter over there? Zoom. They can zoom my picture up. If they can't see it, then that's their problem. I did it. I got it all. Yeah. Don't you love the un unscheduled dirt? Yeah, we blew by and we buried you in dust too. Somebody picked. Uh, yeah, somebody lost a gas can. Somebody lost a gas can. We stopped and picked it up. We don't know whose it was. Oh, I thought that was yours. No, nah, no, nah, somebody lost it. Nah, it uh, anyway, we got, we got plenty of gas, gas now. now. Yeah, really? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> We're assholes. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> then these assholes come by and bury me in dust. Well, hey, we're going, man. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I know I'm an asshole. I just live with it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, they did. So, so we're just returning the favor. <laughs> Yeah, people that have never ridden dirt in their life don't know how to manage that. You, uh, you either get up real close to the other bike that you're trailing, that way you're not eating the dust before it kicks up, or you back way off and just stay out of the cloud. What sucks is when uh, there's no air moving at all, and it just gets kicked up and floats for a long period of time. Because then the more bikes that go through, the worse the cloud gets. Oh man, that would be great. Awesome, so they just bring the tubes to you? Or you just pull them out of the river and uh, keep them overnight? I got you. 
That's cool. Yeah, floating camp, that would be great. You get sunburned like crazy though, you better bring a gallon of sunblock. <laughs> SPF 1000. There it is, there's a river. And then we get floating stuff on the sides. Can't look at it or I'm gonna run something over I don't wanna hit. Whoa, whoa, that's tighter than it looks. It's a lot tighter than it looked. Scoot. 43 wide open yeah 41 yeah 42 it's up down up down okay All right, let's do it. We didn't stop there, did we? That's not one the place where we stopped before. Okay. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be a neat stop. It's cool that we're riding back through some uh, areas that we've already traveled. odd corner it radius then flattened out and then tightened up real quick that was a strange one yeah That's the bridge. Yep, yep, that's right. That's right. That's the swinging bridge down there. Because we went out that reverse direction, uh, going out to the left when we left there. Yep. So the food should be here shortly, right? Yeah, good time to get off. I'm tired. I'm sleepy, and it's hard taking these corners and keeping my balance because my brain is just not working right. Cool. Catfish, man, I haven't had some catfish in a coon year, man. Ooh. Cool, he beat us here. I wonder if he... Gas can recovery. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, gas can recovery was it. I don't think... Yeah. Oh, I just stole your spot. Sorry. All right. Hey, Ooh, about lost in the gravel there. Blah. Okay, time to eat at uh, whatever this is, Riverfront Cafe.
everybody. Welcome to uh, our ride through Arkansas. We just stopped off here at uh, the Anglers Catfish and Steakhouse. And we're sitting out on the patio, but not in the sun, because good lord, the sun is hot today. Uh, we're sitting here on the patio eating, taking a break from the Scooter Cannonball Run. Uh, we're going to eat for a little bit here and get back on the road toward the next checkpoint, but uh, this is a nice place. It'd be really cool to uh, motor down the waterway here, down the river. The Sillimore, or I don't know what this is, Sillimore River? No, White River. This is the White River. Sillimore Creek is right over there, uh, I think, yeah, back one of these directions. And the uh, Swinging Bridge uh, is over there that we visited uh, last time we came through this area, back in November. Anyway, welcome to Cannonball uh, Intermission. Crooked and steep, next 20 miles, drive with care. Okay, we'll try. All right, we're back on gravel, kids. We just came off of a fast pavement section. No road ending, warning, nothing. Just straight from asphalt to gravel in uh, six inches. Nice. Ugh. We should be able to take a road reroute. That was fun, going 55 straight to gravel. Hey, chicken. Ugh, man, they, they stink too, man. They stink a lot. We don't want to smell your stinky chicken, man. Ah, fresh air. How are you liking that smell back there, Tyler? I said, how are you liking that smell back there? You enjoying it? <laughs> I like your little red man purse hanging off of your uh, basket back there, Doug. <laughs> It's a fashion accessory. 